This would be the third game that I've reviewed from Red Wagon Games. The other two were Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. You know, it's kind of nice not to review a Christmas game from them for a change. Saying that, I seem to be noticing a pattern. None of these games that I've reviewed have any meaning to them at all. They were all just fluff. But then I realized, it's not fluff. It's just really, really dumbed down versions of better games. That actually could be a good thing depending on the target audience. And I have to imagine their target for this game would be about two to six year olds because any older and this title would bore them to tears. Now it controls incredibly easy. You just maneuver your carpet through the worlds, lapping locations three times. You don't even have to hold down a button for acceleration. It'll automatically just go for you. You just hold your Wiimote sideways and tilt left or right to move left or right. It's that simple. When you have an item, use the A button to fire it. And that seemed a bit awkward to do that. The one or two button wasn't being used for anything. So it would have been better if you could have used one of those buttons to fire the items. This game also supports the Wii balance board, but since my balance board is currently not working, I couldn't test that. But the option is available. Now the tracks themselves were varied. Some had a simple design, but the later ones could get really strange with loops and underwater sections. One of the better things about this game's tracks it was there were occasional parts where you could branch off to different areas. However, these deviations were brief, and you were back on the main path fairly quickly. But it was nice to see these alternate routes as an option. There are a total of eight tracks to play in four different worlds, but they're all open right from the beginning, so there's no unlocking needed at all. The tracks were all enclosed, which seemed odd. You're on a flying carpet. Where are all these floating bars coming from anyway? And why can't you just float over them or around them? I think the game would have been way more fun if they let you race in an open area. It would have left more room for exploration and better ways to get a faster time on the tracks. Now, like I said, there are items that you can use against the other drivers. They consist of watermelons, chattering teeth, speed boosts, and other things. While the items can be helpful to slow down the other racers, most of the time the real danger on the tracks were the animals on it. Animals would pop up occasionally for you to avoid. If you hit them, you will briefly stop, and then you're going to need to go catch up with the other racers. The AI is just awful. They'll constantly crash into the animals, just like you. Every race, though, will still be very close because of this problem of them hitting the animals, and the only way to go faster than the competition is to use a speed boost or drift behind them. So you might be asking, what do I get if I win a race? Nothing other than the accomplishment of getting a good time. There are no competitions and everything is unlocked from the beginning. So basically you're playing an exhibition race all the time. So there really isn't any pressure to get first place. Unless you really care about high scores. There are also four mini games to play. And that did change things up a little bit. This game supports up to four players split screen. So if you have three other people who really want to play a not that exciting racer, you're good to go. Aladdin's Magic Carpet is a very basic racing game. Its simple controls and easy to maneuver through tracks will only make it interesting for a very young child. If you have a toddler who wants to play a game where it really doesn't matter if you win or lose, then they might enjoy this. If you're anybody other than that, you should just skip this game.